สวัสดีค่ะ Welcome to Hot Thai Kitchen So today I'm gonna make probably the most popular appetizer in any Thai restaurants outside of Thailand and that is crispy spring rolls Now the version I'm gonna make today is vegetarian with the secret ingredient um, but I do have a pork version already if you want to check that out as well I will link to that below So today's recipe is sponsored by once again my favorite brand of glass noodles pine brand glass noodles which are going to be one of the main ingredients in the filling All right, let's get started So let's talk mushrooms. We're going to use two types of mushrooms in the filling. One is dry shiitake mushrooms. That's going to give a lot of umami and flavor. And then the other one, in English, it's called black fungus, which is not the most appealing name. I know they're also known as wood ear mushrooms, but it's important because they will give crunchiness and texture. Soak them in hot water for about 15 minutes and they'll fully rehydrate. You want to squeeze out all the water from the shiitake mushrooms and then don't throw away that mushroom water. Use it to soak your glass noodles. Noodles, so your glass noodles can also absorb extra flavor. So now I just want to cut these and with the shiitake mushrooms you want to remove the stems which I find to be a little tough and then just finely chop it. So one way and then the other way. And then with the other mushroom the one thing you want to look out for is sometimes you get pieces where there's a core. You can't really see it but this part is quite hard so just cut that off. What I'm gonna do is maybe cut it down lengthwise first so I get it to the length that I need and then I'm just gonna julienne them. And then I'm just gonna run my knife this way one more time to get them into short pieces. That's it. Okay, so that is my bowl of umami goodness. And now let's deal with our secret ingredients. So I came up with the idea to add Da, 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 da. This alien egg. Now this is taro root or part of it anyway. So as you can see the store actually sold them cut up already. Sometimes you can find them already peeled which is what I prefer so I don't mess with it. But this time they didn't have any. Um, before you cut down the taro you want to wear latex gloves first or some sort of hand protection because the raw taro can make your skin itchy. Not, it's not terrible for me, but it's still a little bit annoying. Um, and so adding taro is going to add a little bit of aroma, but also creaminess. And it's going to make a vegetarian spring roll feel a lot more substantial. So I really like adding that. You can try sweet potato if you like. I just love the smell of taro. I don't love taro in everything, but when it works, it really works. There's nothing quite like it. Last thing to prep is our glass noodles. So here are noodles fully soaked in our mushroom water. Now in order to make them fit nicely into spring rolls, they have to be quite short. So I'm going to cut them into about two inch pieces. Now one of the reasons why I like Pine Brand is because it's one of the brands that uses 100% mung bean starch as opposed to a mix of a couple of starches. And mung bean starch noodles, when they're pure, they're more sturdy, they're more resistant to overcooking and tearing. So you know, if you're doing aggressive stir frying, they're not gonna break down on you. If you do soup, they're not gonna overcook in a few minutes. So that's why it's quite important. And with Pine Brand, there's two different ones. Um, one that's bleached and one that's unbleached. It's a little bit green. They both work exactly the same in any recipe. Apart from that, just some simple spring roll filling vegetables, super classic, some carrots that you want to do is julienne, some cabbage, and also I have some uh, chopped up cilantro stems, which are optional, but really add nice flavor. Um, everything else we'll just talk about as I use them. All right, this is very easy. I got a big wok here. And we're basically just gonna make a delicious glass noodle stir fry, which we then are going to put inside spring rolls. But if you get lazy, you can just eat the stir fry. So I'm going to add a little bit of oil, just some neutral oil. In goes with some garlic, some white pepper. So my secret with this recipe is I add quite a lot of white pepper. The pepperiness is really what gives this some character. If you're making this for kids, maybe only do half of what I just put in. So just slowly cook this until the garlic starts to turn a little bit golden. Once the garlic is golden, in goes all your vegetables. And it's gonna look like a lot, but do not worry. It will all wilt down. Give this a quick toss. And then I'm gonna add just half of the soy sauce. 
so that the salt in the soy sauce will help draw out moisture and it'll also season the vegetables. Ooh, looks so healthy, right? And don't worry if your taro starts breaking or the carrots start breaking. It's all going into spring rolls anyway. This smells so good already. Oh my God. Mushrooms also go in, by the way. I knew it looked a little different. <laughs> and I was like, why does it look a little plain? Thankfully, the mushrooms don't need to be wilted down. Okay, so at this point, if you feel like it's taking a while, the taro is not quite cooked and it feels dry, you can add that mushroom soaking water that you still did not throw away, very important. If you forgot, you can just use water. So, but if things feel like they need a little bit of moisture to help it steam and cook, feel free to add that, that's what that's there for. So now that the taro is pretty much fully cooked, and you will also notice that it's probably cooked when some of them start breaking because they'll start becoming more tender. And now I'm gonna add the noodles. <laughs> Along with my cilantro stems and all of the seasoning. So that's the remaining soy sauce. So the reason why I didn't want to add all the soy sauce at once is so that the noodles can get some. I got some sugar. And then make sure I didn't forget anything. I'm gonna add a quarter cup of the mushroom water again. And now I'm just gonna cook this until the noodles are fully cooked and tender. Looks amazing. I'm going to now just turn off the heat and some green onions will go in, yeah. Give that a quick toss. Okay, let's give this a taste and see if it needs any more salt. Mmm, oh, so good. But it does need a little more salt. And I like to add the salt last just in case for whatever reason, you know, you put a little bit too much soy sauce or whatever and didn't need the salt, so. And I do like to season this quite well. Like you should be able to just eat this and enjoy this without anything else. And I think one of the reasons why sometimes you buy spring rolls from like a takeout and it's just kind of ho-hum and you really need that dipping sauce because the filling has got nothing going for it. It's just like a bunch of noodles and some shreds of cabbage and, and carrots and you know, there's really nothing going for it. But this is delicious as is. Wrapping time. You can make this with whatever size spring roll wrappers you want, um, but as much as I love all things tiny and mini, I like to use big size spring rolls because the bigger they are, the less wrapping I have to do. So when you take them out of the package, you wanna thaw these first, these come frozen. They're gonna be kind of stuck together. So I just like to, while your filling cools, which you need to wait for a bit anyway, just peel these off first. So when you do wrap, you don't have to stop and peel every single time. Just looking for something to do while my filling is cooling. Okay, I'm ready to wrap. Now, usually the glue that I use to seal the wrapper is just a beaten egg. It's the easiest one to work with. But if you're trying to do a vegan version, what you can do is just take some all-purpose flour and you just add about equal parts water. So if you're using like a tablespoon of flour, add a tablespoon of water and you make this sticky paste that will work in the same way. There you go, yeah, that's a, that's a good consistency. It's a little thinner than I make it, but if you find that it's too runny, you can always just add a little bit more flour. Corner towards you. Each large spring roll, these are eight inch wrappers, takes about a little bit more than a quarter of a cup, I think. You can kind of play around with this. And this is right now just lukewarm, which is okay. You don't want this piping hot. And then you spread it out into a lock shape, you fold over and then you push back so that it's tight, so that the filling is, you know, not loose. And then what I do is you fold it over till you're about halfway. And then once you're past the halfway point, you fold the sides over like so, and then roll it forward. And then once you get to the end, you apply your glue of choice, and then you roll it forward and off it goes, a beautiful spring roll. Now this makes about 12 to 14, so it's not too bad, but if you make the little ones, then you got like 24 to make. Time to fry, very straightforward. You just deep fry these in oil 
for about five minutes until they're golden. You can bake them and air fry them. I'll include details about that in the written post, but the best way is to deep fry them. You can freeze these, absolutely. Uh, you just freeze them and then fry them directly from frozen. They'll just take a few more minutes to fry. That's it. Okay, my oil is at 350. I can now slowly drop them in. Maybe use tongs so you don't get oil splatters. Everything's already cooked. So you just need them to be crispy, which in my experience takes about five minutes. So these have a nice color and I'll share with you a trick of how you know these are actually crispy. See how the bubbles are now only coming from the edges and that's just the moisture from the filling coming out as steam. But on the surface, there's nothing. See that? There's no bubbles coming from the surface of the wrapper. And if there's no bubbles, that means there's no moisture and no moisture means it's crispy. So that is how you tell. And um, set them on either a rack or some paper towel to absorb excess oil and then repeat. Okay. So these have cooled for several minutes actually and it's still quite warm. So let's cut in and pro tip. They always look nicer when you cut them on a diagonal. Look at that. Look how full of stuff they are. You know, if you get the cheap takeout ones, it's just mostly noodles, right? Like look at all this flavor and our vegetables are still in pieces, which is gonna mean texture is perfect. Now, um, we can arrange them into a little bamboo steamer for a cute presentation, even though it makes no sense because these are not steamed. I'm gonna do it anyway, because I think they're so cute. Yeah. So that's it. Look how cute that is for a little special dinner or something. Now, I think these are quite flavorful by themselves, so you don't really need a dipping sauce, but to take it to the next level, of course, the classic dipping sauce that you want to serve together is sweet chili sauce. I have a recipe for this for a better than store-bought version, but you can just use a store-bought one as well. I think the spicy, vinegary flavor of the dip kind of balances everything out. Give it a nice dippy dip. Oh. Mm, it smells so good. Mm. Best spring rolls I've ever had, period. There's just so much flavor going on in here. The taro, you don't really like immediately taste, ooh, taro, but you taste, oh, what's that flavor and a little bit of creaminess, it's really nice. And there's so much texture going on, like the noodles held their consistency, their texture really well, and the black fungus mushrooms that's in there, so it's not just, you know, one texture, there's lots going on. And of course, the crispy exterior as well. So the recipe, as always, will be on hottaikitchen.com. And a special thanks to our Patreon member who helps support the show. If you want to know what that's all about and how you can gain access to bonus content, check out the link in the description below. Thank you, as always, for watching. And I will see you next time for your next delicious time.